<laughs> Vodnik and Vadianoi mythology. The Vadianoi, Vodnik in some cases, or water sprite, like his kin spirit the Domuvoi, is affectionately called Dhydushka, or grandfather, by the peasants. Mention Vodnik. Vadianoi and Vodnisai generally inhabit the depths of rivers, lakes, or pools, but sometimes dwell in swamps, and Vadianoi is especially fond of taking up his quarters in a mill stream, close to the wheel. Vadianoi's Physical Description Vadianoi can transform himself in many ways, from a fish, usually a pike, to a wooden log or even a beautiful maiden. Sometimes, he is represented, like the western merman, with a fish's tail. When in a village, a Vodnik assumes the form of a human being, though his true nature is revealed by the water that oozes from the left side of his coat, and the spot on which he sits instantly becomes wet. Vadianoi appeared as a naked old man with a large paunch and a bloated face. With a fat belly and puffy cheeks, a high reed cap on his head, and a rush belt around his waist. His proper form, however, was green-skinned, covered in weeds, slime, bumps, and hideous warts. Although the Vodianoi were immortal, they aged like humans and were rejuvenated according to the moon's phases. Powers of Vodianoi and Interaction with Humans The Vodianic is the master of the waters, but although he is endowed with terrible strength and power so long as he is in the water, he is weak when on dry land. Everything that happens in the water is the result of his will. When in good humor, he drives the fish into the fisherman's net and guides sailors to safe places in stormy weather, but when his mood is irritable, he lures them to dangerous coasts and upsets their boats. He tears the spikes out of the mill wheels, diverts the water from its course, and floods the mill, and if the miller wishes to succeed, he should bury some living being in the foundations of his mill, such as a cow, a sheep, or even a man. There is also a widespread belief that the Vodianic drowns those who bathe at midday or at midnight. During the day, he generally lies at the bottom of the deep pools, but at night, he sits on the shore combing his hair, or he sports in the water, diving with a splash and emerging far away, occasionally, he also fights with the wood sprites, the noise of their battles being heard far away. When on land, Vadianoi likes to visit markets, and his appearance foretells the price of corn, if he pays dearly, there will be a bad harvest, if cheaply, a good crop may be expected. He likes to ride a shefish or saddle a horse, bull, or cow, which he rides till it falls dead in the morasses. He is much given to drinking and delights in carousing and card playing. Sacrifices to Vadianoi Early legends said that a Vodianoi would claim a life in compensation every time a new water mill was built, for the Vodianoi tended to favor the still waters of the mill pond. Thus, every mill is supposed to have a Vodianoi attached to it, or several if it has more wheels than one. Consequently, millers are generally obliged to be well versed in the black art, for if they do not understand how to treat the water spirits, all will go ill with them. Millers and peasants also cross themselves before swimming or stepping into the water to bathe, just in case the Vodianoi was angry and tried to drown them. However, Vodniks were not omniscient and might easily be tricked. Vodnik is also a patron of beekeeping, and it is customary to enclose the first swarm of the year in a bag and to throw it, weighted with a stone, into the nearest river as an offering to him. He who does this will prosper as a beekeeper, especially if he takes a honeycomb from a hive on street Zosima's day and throws it into a mill stream at midnight. In his own realm, he not only rules over all the fish that swim, but he also greatly influences a lot of fishers and mariners. Sometimes he brings them good luck, sometimes he lures them to destruction, sometimes he gets caught in fishermen's nets, but he immediately tears them asunder, and all the fish that had been enclosed in them swim out after him. During the winter, the Vadianoi sleeps, but in the early spring, he awakes, is wrathful and hungry, and manifests his anger through various spiteful actions. To appease him, earn his favor and goodwill, peasants in some areas buy a horse, feed it well for three days, tie its legs together, smear honey on its head, 
adorn its mane with red ribbons, attach two millstones to its neck, and fling it into an ice hole or if the frost has broken up, into the middle of a river at midnight. Vadianoi had been waiting for his present for three days, expressing his impatience with groans and upheavings of water. After he has received his due, he becomes quiet. Fishermen propitiate him at the same time of year by pouring oil on the water, begging him as they do so to be good to them, and millers once a year sacrifice a black pig to him. A goose, too, is generally presented to him in the middle of September as a return for his having watched over the farmer's ducks and geese during the summer months. In order to make dams durable and prevent the vodnik from destroying them, Ukrainians used to bury a horse's head in them. Interactions of vodnik with humans a fisherman once found a dead body floating about in the water, so he took it into his boat. But to his horror, the corpse suddenly came to life, uttered a wild laugh, and jumped overboard. That was one of Vadiano's pranks. A sportsman once waded into a river after a wounded duck. The Vadianoi got hold of him by the neck and would have pulled him under if he had not cut himself loose with his axe. When he got home, the blue marks left by Vadianoi's fingers were all over his neck. Sometimes the Vadianoi will jump on a horse and ride it to death, so, to keep him away while horses are fording a river, the peasants sign a cross on the water with a knife or a scythe. One should not bathe, say the peasants, without a cross around one's neck or after sunset. Bathing during the week of the prophet Ilias, Elijah, formerly Perun, the thunderer, feast is especially dangerous because the Vadianoi is on the lookout for victims. Fishermen in Bohemia are afraid of assisting a drowning man, fearing that the Vadianoi will be offended and drive the fish from their nets, and they say he often sits on the shore with a club in his hand, from which hang ribbons of various colors, with these, he allures children and those whom he catches he drowns. The souls of his victims the Vadianoi keeps, making them his servants, but their bodies he allows to float to shore. In Ukraine, there is a tradition that, when the sea is rough, half-fishy marine people appear on the surface of the water and sing songs. Vadianoi's family. The Vodianik is married and is the father of a family, is said to have 111 beautiful daughters who torture and torment the drowned. The water sprites have their subaqueous dwellings well stocked with all sorts of cattle. Some legends said that the Vodianoi tended their own cattle on dry land and would creep out at night to pasture them on the peasant's land. He would dress as an ordinary peasant on these occasions, but he was instantly recognizable because his clothes were always damp and he left a trail of wet footprints wherever he went. Many a girl who has drowned herself has been turned into a Rusalka or some such being and then married a Vodianoi. He also marries water nymphs or girls who have been cursed by their fathers or mothers. On the occasion of such a marriage, or indeed of any subaqueous wedding, the Vodnasai indulge in drunkenness, mad revels, and pranks that cause the waters to become wildly agitated and often carry away bridges or mill dams. That is how the peasants explain accidents that arise when the snows melt and the streams wax violently. Here is one of the stories about a mixed marriage beneath the waves. Once upon a time a girl was drowned, and she lived for many years after that with a water sprite. But one day she swam to the shore and saw the red sun, the green woods and fields, and heard the humming of insects and the distant sound of church bells. Then a longing for her old life on earth came over her, and she could not resist the temptation. So she came out of the water and went to her native village but neither her relatives nor her friends recognized her. Sadly, she returned in the evening to the water's edge and passed once more into the power of the water sprite. Two days later, her mutilated corpse floated onto the sands while the river roared and was wildly agitated. The remorseful water sprite was lamenting his irrevocable loss. When Vodnik's wife is about to give birth, he assumes the appearance of an ordinary mortal and fetches a midwife from some neighboring village to attend to her. Afterward, he richly rewards the midwife with gold and silver. Sometimes his babies would stray from home and be caught in fishermen's nets. If the fishermen gently returned them to the water, Vadianoi would reward them with a good catch, if they did not, he would vent his anger on them. 
tearing their nets and capsizing their boats. On one occasion, for instance, capturers returned a Vodnik's baby to its father after he promised to drive plenty of fish into their nets in the future, a promise that he conscientiously fulfilled. Vodni Pani, Female Slavic Water Nymphs The water nymphs, Vodni Pani, often called white women, Bile Pam, as well, are tall, sad, and pale, and are dressed in green, transparent robes. They live under the water in crystal palaces, which may be approached by paths strewn with gold and silver gravel. They like to rock on trees and lure young lads with their wonderful singing. In the evening, they leave their hiding places and betake themselves to villages to join the dancing and other amusements of the village folk. A water nymph who has been captured will help people wash their linen and tidy their rooms, but she will disappear if presented with a new robe.